Welcome to the second part of this video where I show you how you can run your own search engine with Apache Solar. So in the first video, I show you how to install Solar and how to run it locally via Docker. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can interact with Solar via Node.js. So if you did the first tutorial, you should have Solar running and it should be running on this port, 8983. The next thing you need to do is go to my GitHub for Pentacode and then click on Solar. Here you can see all the code for this video tutorial. So I assume you clone the repository and have it opened and go to the node app folder under Solar. Here you will see the code for this lesson. The, the library that I'm going to use is called Solar Node. You can find it on NPM here. After playing around with a couple of libraries, I find this library the easiest to use. And it's a little out of date, but it does what it needs. So let's see how we can use it. First, you need to require the Solar Node library. And here, I'm just requiring in a JSON file full of data. This is a dummy set of data that we're going to use later. And to start a new client, you have to instantiate a new variable called clients and then do a new solar node. You have to pass in the host, the port, and the core that we created from the first tutorial. So here I'm just using the default values. The core name is called my core. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is the ability to add documents to solar database via code. So you can do this. I'm comment this part out. So what this is doing is making a JSON object, I mean, sorry, it's making an object with a couple of keys and then we call it data. Now, Solar is a schemaless database, so it's able to handle all these data. Um, you, you need to specify the ID if you want, otherwise, Solar will automatically make an ID. So, to create a new document, you call the client.update method and pass in the data as the first parameter. The second parameter is the callback. So once there's no error, it will respond with what the result is. So let's run this code and see what happens. So I go to the node add directory, and then I do node index.js. As you can see, it does a update command to solar and with this data. And the result is status zero, query time 417 milliseconds. So let's go to solar and see if this data is in there. As you can see, the document has been created in the database. Very simple. Now let's do a multiple update, multiple add query. So I want to add a bunch of documents from people to JSON. Let's say you got this data somewhere from uh, your data scientist or some data export. You have a bunch of JSON data. So I want to add all of that into Solar. So you can do that very easily via a loop. So I'm just doing people. I'm just requiring in the people JSON. And then for each person, I'm going to do an update on it. So let's run this. So it will run this asynchronously, and it will take a bit. So the total query time is about three, four seconds. So let's run this command to get all documents in Solar. And as you can see, now we have 26 documents and all of them were inserted from the JSON file. Very nice. So now we are going to go over how to delete documents. There are three ways you can delete. Well, I'm going to go over three methods of delete. One is the string query where you do the whatever you would type here in the Q field. You can enter it into a string. So if I want to delete the document with ID of 2, I will do this. If I want to de delete all the documents in the database, I will do star. And if I want to use the object query, I can do this. It's basically this, but in an object form. So let's delete all the documents in the database. So I'm going to use the delete query and call the delete method of the client. So if I run no index, and all of them were deleted. So if I go back to the console, see, no documents. So this is very easy to delete any documents. And let's put back all our documents just for this tutorial. Let's add each document back. 
and then I'm going to add the dummy duck here back as well okay so now we should have all of our documents back in the database great now let's do a search this is where solar shines the reason you install solar is mostly for the search purpose so let's say I want to do a search query you first need to create a variable and call and set it to equal to a search query value so here I want to do a search query for the gender query. Gender query is an object form and it's look for all documents in which the gender is female. So I put past that value here and then I want it in JSON form. And this is a search query variable. Now I need to pass that to the search method in Solar. So when you get the response back from Solar, you can loop through each and then log them out. So what I will do is this if I run this so here it gives me all the documents in the database where the gender is female as you can see they're all females so this is extremely fast and useful and you can use it let's say I want to do gender I want to do author who is wisely so if I do pass that in so it gives me one document right where the author is YZ. So it knows how to search for any field in the documents. You can also do pagination and starts. So start is where which page you want to start and rows is how many results you want it back. So very standard uh, to any no index, uh, no, no SQL databases. So as you can see, Solar is very powerful and useful for searches. And that's just the surface of what it can do in terms of search. There's a lot of advanced abil abilities for Solar, and you can definitely do some research on how to use it. And I suggest you go to the Solar documenta documentation page to find out the full power of Solar. So I hope this gives you a nice introduction to what Solar can do, and I hope you find this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.